Hi and welcome everybody to this re-recording of my USR 2021 presentation as part of the keynote session on tools and technologies for supporting algorithm fairness and inclusion. And in this video, I will tell you about some tools and strategies for choosing colors for data visualization that are more inclusive to viewers um, with color vision deficiencies. And of course, colors are everywhere in data visualization and they are not always easy to choose. Um, but on the other hand, they are also often um, perceived as being uh, fun to select uh, so that you can put a personal touch on a certain visualization. But when doing so, you should keep in mind that the power of color is limited. So if you have the chance to code the information that you want to show in a different way, in addition to color or maybe also alternatively to color it's often a good idea to do so for example using length um, in lines or scatter plots um, or something like that are often more easy to um, decode for the viewer than uh, something with um, uh, using um, a color palette but some visualizations, some of which I will show you in this presentation, um, also inherently need the use of color. And then you should be aware that a certain share of your audience will be subject to color vision deficiencies. Especially red-green color blindnesses um, are quite frequent. In Northern Europe, um, we say that about 8% of the males are affected, a um, smaller share of the females and um, the exact proportions may vary a little bit with respect to ethnicity and so on. But as a rough benchmark, these numbers um, work quite well. And um, in addition to color vision deficiencies, there might be other limitations um, on the side of the viewers or also technical limitations with, with, with regard to the display or um, the projector being used, for example. And um, here for illustration, I'm using a very simple um, display of a time series using one of the built-in data sets um, in base R. It's the time series of European stock indexes in the, uh, the 90s. And I'm using a very basic uh, default display here. And the colors are using, uh, I'm using other um, colors one to three and five in the default palette and I'm adding a legend to the plot. And up to our version three, you would have gotten something like this display. And I guess most of you remember um, this palette. Um, it was this um, old default palette in, in R with very flashy colors and um, especially the, the cyan in, um, in this display is too light so light that on certain uh, projectors or displays it might even almost disappear in the background and uh, similar problems might even hold for the green which is darker but um, often does not render that well because it's such a bright and flashy um, color it's more um, subject to variations across um, different displays in addition to the colors um, we we have added uh, this um, legend using um, the um, columns um, in the order they appear in the time series. And um, this legend is hence not the, the best you could do because the ordering does not uh, correspond to the ordering of the lines in any part of the display. And um, in addition to, uh, to these problems, there's another one that's maybe not obvious uh, for viewers that have full color vision, namely, um, some of the lines are very hard to distinguish for certain kinds of red-green color blindness. And here I'm emulating protonope vision and suddenly the red line and uh, the black line become almost um, indistinguishable. And um, it's very hard to see which of these two lines uh, corresponds to the DAX, the German stock index, and which one corresponds to the SMI, the Swiss index. And um, to overcome this problem, there's um, a relatively simple solution that has nothing to do with color. Namely, we can use direct labeling. So rather than putting uh, the legend up here, we can put a direct label to the time series. And even if all of the time series were displayed completely in black, we could go 
backwards in time and uh, could match the label of the time series to the trajectory of the time series. But in addition um, to this, uh, we want to improve the colors. So this was um, the color scale we started out from and um, the default palette and base are changed from version three to version four and this is the new default palette and you might think at first that not so much has changed these colors are still very similar and this is because they use um, essentially the same use or very similar use but um, the brightness is more balanced this um, has one immediate effect that the cyan um, comes more to the foreground and um, it was very light before and now it's easier to read but in addition to that and maybe more importantly it has another side effect namely if we emulate protonope vision again now um, the red line and the black line are still easier to distinguish uh, the difference is not um, uh, huge but um, at least it's possible to tell them apart in a display like this it might be harder if uh, the lines are thinner or if it's just points uh, but with thicker lines or shaded areas and the two colors can be distinguished even for protonope users if we want to increase the contrast further we could use another palette that was specifically designed um, to be robust against uh, different kinds of color vision deficiencies namely the okabe ito palette which is now also available in base r and if we emulate protonope vision again then we see that all four colors remain clearly distinguishable so to wrap up we we have seen um, in this motivation that uh, the default palette um, has improved a lot so rather than these uh, ugly flashy colors we had in the old um, base palette we now have this new one using similar use but a um, more balanced setup and uh, that is also more accessible for viewers with color vision deficiency of course you might argue that um, base R is very late to the party with this and has neglected better color palettes for a long time and in part this was because um, much better packages were widely available notably color brewer um, or R color brewer uh, was available very early on ggplot2 has better defaults than base R uh, the viridis package became very popular and there are a few other um, nice packages like our color space package arcato color polychrome from Psycho, Pels and Palatier, as well as uh, um, various other useful color packages. So many good palettes have been easily available and now um, a few of these are also available easily in base R in this palette colors function. So there's this um, R4 color palette, the Okaba Ito, then we have various um, qualitative palettes from the um, Color Brewer package and uh, also colors from uh, Tableau, um, as well as two palettes from Polychrome that have uh, 26 or 36 different colors respectively. And all of these colors are intended for qualitative um, color scales, so for coding different categories. And um, to, to see how robust these are um, under uh, color vision uh, deficiencies, uh, we can use, for example, the swatch plot function from our color space package that offers an option um, CVD for color vision deficiencies that we can set to true. And here we use that um, for the uh, new R4 default palette. And um, first we get the um, original um, palette. And then most importantly, we get the two common forms of red-green color blindness, neutronope and protonope vision. Then there's a panel for tritonope vision, which is um, a lot rarer than uh, deuteronope and protonope uh, vision. And uh, we also get a desaturated view that would be relevant to monochromats, which are also very rare. But uh, nevertheless, it's good to have an understanding how the brightness changes um, in the colors. And um, you can plug in any palette you want um, into the swatch plot. Um, for example, we can look at the Kabe Ito palette and see that all of the colors are um, still distinguishable under all these different forms of um, color vision deficiencies. 
And um, of course, these were all uh, qualitative um, color palettes. And um, now we would also be interested what we can do for sequential and diverging palettes that we would use for um, um, displaying uh, numeric or ordered information. And uh, before uh, doing so, I will take a short excursion um, uh, to certain color models that help us understand how palettes are constructed. And the color space or color model I'm using here is the HCL model, which stands for U, Chroma and Luminance. And uh, these three properties try to capture the perceptual dimensions of the human visual system. So we, we distinguish the U um, from uh, red or yellow, green, blue to purple. And in this display, I have kept the chroma, the colorfulness and the luminance, the brightness fixed and just varied the hue. And in the next uh, swatch, I'm just varying the chroma from gray to um, uh, very colorful while keeping the hue, red hue in this case, fixed and also the luminance fixed. So if I were to desaturate this display, I would end up with all the same grays. And in the third swatch, I'm showing a progression of luminance while keeping the hue and uh, the chroma fixed. So this HCL color model um, gives us a control to um, um, uh, de uh, to encode the, the different uh, properties of the uh, human visual system in a palette and also to understand palettes in terms of these three dimensions or three properties. And this is in contrast to the much more widely used RGB color model, which stands for red, green and blue, um, which is the way how computers and TVs used to generate colors and still represent colors as mixtures of these three primaries. And while this is something that is useful to communicate uh, with computers, it is not something that is useful co for communicating with humans typically. So keeping these um, HCL properties in mind, we can now have a look um, how um, typical um, palettes are set up. And we distinguish the three most common types of palettes, qualitative, sequential and diverging. And um, I have included some examples here. And the first one is for a qualitative scale that we would use for encoding um, categorical information in a data visualization where there's no particular ordering of the categories. And um, when you do so, you should typically try to keep luminance differences uh, to, uh, to be not too large um, in order not to introduce any biases between um, areas that are shaded very dark and that might be perceived to be more prominent than the light areas. So the difference should not be too large. And in this example up here, I have um, selected the colors to be exactly at equal luminance, um, which is a good idea for viewers with full color vision, but typically poses challenges for viewers with color vision deficiencies because it really limits you th to three or four different views, uh, views that can be um, distinguished well. And if you need more different um, colors, it's a good idea to combine these with a certain um, amount of luminance, di luminance differences. And this is what um, the colors in the palette colors function do. So you end up with more colors that can be distinguished. Next, we look at uh, the sequential palette here in the middle that is used for um, encoding numeric information or at least ordered information that goes from high to low or vice versa, from interesting to uninteresting. And uh, the crucial part about this is to use a palette that goes from dark to light or light to dark. And you can um, increase the contrast in the palette by um, including some chroma um, um, changes or hue changes along with the luminance changes. But um, it's most important that uh, you, you have this light dark contrast that uh, will be visible to everybody um, that can see um, colors um, in, in a display. 
Last, uh, we have um, the diverging uh, palette here on the top right. And this is also for ordered or numeric information, but diverging from a neutral value into two different directions, uh, for example, higher or lower than expected. And for this, we would typically combine two sequential palettes um, that are balanced with respect to their luminance and chroma properties, but use two different uh, hues that are um, easily distinguishable for all viewers. And uh, here this green-brown palette also works under color vision constraints. And um, these palettes, as well as various others, are provided in the uh, still relatively new base R function HCL colors, where these HCL properties were used to approximate uh, palettes from various packages like uh, Color Brewer, Viridis, um, um, Carto Color, um, Psycho, and a few others. So you have a broad range of well established uh, palettes available in this function. So let's see some of these uh, functions in, in practice where we look at a risk map. And um, here we see a picture of a hurricane that is um, approaching the mainland in the US. And uh, this is a risk map or warning map that's put out by the NOAA, the National Oceo Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in the US. And um, the color scale um, used here encodes the probability for a tropical storm force wind speed. So it's not about the cone of the hurricane uh, reaching a certain point, but uh, about a very strong wind um, occurring in a certain area. And the colors encode the probability for this um, um, strong wind occurring. And we start in the margins here with a dark green that corresponds uh, to a probability between 5 and 10%. And then we go over the lighter green, yellow, orange, um, and so on to the dark purple, uh, which codes a probability of more than 90% uh, probability. So what are potential problems with this palette? So first, it's very flashy. There's a lot of chroma everywhere, so it's not so clear where to look at first because there are flashy colors everywhere. Um, more seriously, because this is about communication to the public, a certain share of the public will have problems perceiving the colors correctly because if we emulate Deuteranopia here, the other common form of uh, red-green color blindness, then we see that we have um, uh, different parts of uh, the, the palette um, corresponding to um, uh, different probabilities um, that are very hard to distinguish. The colors are almost the same. And the main reason for this is that the scale changes from dark to light and then from light back to dark. So the, you have this uh, non-monotonic change in luminance, which is very unintuitive for a sequential um, scale like this one. And it puts a lot of emphasis on areas that shouldn't receive that much emphasis. And as an alternative, we could use um, a palette like this one. Uh, this is an orange red palette I took from um, Color Brewer or its HCL approximation. And we have light colors in the margins where the probabilities are low. And then we move to darker, redder colors uh, where the risk increases towards the cone of the hurricane. And uh, this is something that is robust if I desaturate uh, the colors and also if I emulate red-green color blindness again. So this works for um, all viewers and is much more intuitive than the original scale uh, that was used. And because it's especially about uh, communication to the public, um, such a more accessible um, palette uh, would make much more sense in order not to confuse the audience. And uh, confusion, confusion might have serious issues um, as um, this um, episode showed that you might remember the Sharpie Gate uh, incident where um, um, President Trump um, used uh, this map uh, among others to um, 
justify his claim that Hurricane Dorian was about to hit Alabama and he used the Sharpie to extend the cone of the hurricane to also justify this which um, was um, a false warning and um, uh, caused um, unnecessary confusion especially among the people living in Alabama. Um, it's not likely that uh, the colors were the main reason for the confusion of the president uh, back then but uh, still more accessible colors might have helped. And um, as a last point in, in my presentation, I now want to visit another issue that's often uh, brought up when talking about colors, that um, it might be a good idea to take inspiration from designers, painters or directors that um, um, know about color composition and um, we, we might learn something from them for data visualization. And in order not to rain on anyone's parade, I'm not using an R package here, but um, I'm using colors from one of my favorite um, directors, Pedro Almodovar. And this is a picture from his movie, Todo Sobre Mi Madre. And um, this is a palette I found suggested online to be taken from this picture. So um, it goes from this dark red um, to um, the, the light yellow. And if you desaturate the picture and the palette, you see that this might work as a sequential palette. We go from dark to light, um, as I said, you should. But if we add the colors again, we, we also see that two colors stand out specifically. It's uh, this uh, blood red in, uh, in the middle and uh, this uh, gold yellow at the end, um, which occur in the picture in the, the code and uh, the wall and uh, the, the hair and um, the, the door here. And of course, um, these were intended by the director Almodova to stand out. And uh, this makes sense for, for the movie. And, but for a, a data visualization, this uh, increased chroma of these two colors compared to the colors around them um, is actually not so useful. If we um, put this palette into our risk map, we, we get this result. And suddenly we have much more emphasis again on the margin where we have this uh, yellow gold color with a lot of chroma and also this um, shiny blood red color in the middle receives much more um, um, attention than it would in this um, palette that I have uh, suggested, this orange red scale from Color Brewer that is much smoother and um, much more uh, monotonic than these jumps in chroma that I have in the other palette based on the movie picture. And um, these comments do not just apply to sequential palettes, uh, but potentially also to um, qualitative palettes, of course. And here's another um, Almodova movie. Um, here he is in the background of the picture. And it's a screenshot um, from the promotion of one of his early 90s movies, Tacones Lejanos. And um, this is a palette I found again suggested online uh, based on this picture. It has this great early 90s um, uh, bright colors um, uh, that were taken uh, from uh, the sofa, uh, the, the cushions and uh, the, the clothes of um, the actors and actresses. But again, we have to be uh, careful when, uh, when doing so because um, uh, first, the colors are very flashy again, and if we emulate Deuteranopia, we also see that uh, these two colors become almost indistinguishable. Even with full color vision, this, these two dark blues were not easy to distinguish, but um, this greenish and reddish color um, also almost collapse um, and are not distinguishable under certain red-green color dif uh, vision deficiencies. Okay, so to wrap up um, the tools um, I have shown you or that I have used as part of my presentation are um, were mainly uh, palette colors and HCL colors, functions that were added relatively recently to, to base R and that give you a good starting point uh, for palettes in addition to all these other great packages with palettes that are available out there. 
And then um, I have used our color space package to um, assess the robustness of um, the palettes um, most easily with the swatch plot function and adding the CVD equal to true emulation. But um, the package also provides standalone functions to, to emulate um, the, the color vision deficiencies. So you can uh, put this on your palette and add it into your displays, for example. Or you can use the interactive shiny apps that we uh, provide within the package so that you can run them locally or you can go to hclwizard.org and we have an HCL based color picker, we have an HCL based uh, palette constructor and a color vision deficiency emulator on, uh, on that page. And uh, the, for the strategy you can use uh, when um, setting up the display, you should first check whether color is at all appropriate for coding your information or whether the same information can also be put into some, uh, some other property of the display. I showed you the example with the direct labeling, but also you might decide to go for a completely different display where the quantity you want to show is shown by points or lines, for example. When you choose colors, you should choose an appropriate uh, palette, qualitative, sequential or diverging. And um, it's probably a good idea to not try to reinvent the wheel every time, but to start out from well-established palettes that are widely used. Um, you Sometimes users argue that they want to be more original than that, but uh, often it's better to uh, to have a good palette that can be easily understood by the viewers than to, to have a palette that sets you apart from other displays. You can check the robustness of the palette, for example, with the tools in color space. And as a general guidance, I would recommend to be careful with palettes that use too much chroma, especially in uh, sequential and diverging displays. It's usually a good idea to co-vary chroma with changes in the luminance. If you want to look at some uh, references, um, we have uh, written um, a paper that appeared in the Journal of Statistical Software on our color space um, package. And I can use this to, to also credit my co-authors, um, especially Reto Stauffer, who was also involved with setting up some of the examples I showed in the presentation. And then also Paul Morell, uh, who was uh, the one who put um, the work also into base R in um, the HCL colors and uh, palette colors function. And for these two, we wrote two blog posts um, uh, together with Paul and also with Martin Mechlein, Dipay and Saka uh, for the new default palette. And you can look at these to learn a little bit more. You find links to all this information or somewhat extended versions of the articles on our color space webpage. Um, uh, which also has various examples for um, color palettes that do not work that well and um, has links to, um, to all the other sites. If you want to reach out, uh, you're very welcome to do so. Um, here's also my, uh, my Twitter handle if you want to do it through Twitter. Thank you very much.